Hello and welcome back to Cryptocurrency Trading Masterclass by Wealthy Education. In this video, we'll talk about how to trade based upon volume. Now, volume is crucial because it shows that there are real buyers behind or sellers behind a move. If there aren't much in the way of uh, buying uh, volumes in the markets, and it's basically less liquid, then a market could jump and give you the false sense of bullishness or, or bearishness. It could fall uh, based upon the fact that maybe there just weren't that many participants. So one sizable order comes in and knocks it around. So that's why you like volume. Volume tells you that there are a lot of people in that market getting involved. Furthermore, we'll not only talk about volume, but we're going to talk about RSI, which is Relative Strength Index. So as I put this on the chart, you can see that it pulls up uh, another window down here at the bottom. And there is a range between 30 and 70, which is considered to be uh, the normal uh, strength of a trend. However, there are times where you can get extraordinarily overbought. And then as you roll over, that's a that's a sign that perhaps you are struggling. There is also something known as divergence. If you remember in the MACD video that you had a high, a high like in this case, a higher high and a lower high on the indicator in this oscillator, that tells you the same thing as well, that perhaps maybe we may run into some trouble. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to fall. It just suggests that you could. So let's go ahead and uh, assume that every time you get a turnover here in the overbought condition, the market falls down. Just as if you get into oversold, which we don't have any examples on this particular chart, uh, you could see the sellers run out of momentum. It just suggests that perhaps we had gotten a bit ahead of ourselves. But another thing that we need to take a look at is that volume that I had talked about previously. So if you type in vol or volume, you can click on that and you can see that it does this underlay here. So one of the quickest ways you can use volume is just simple observation, you know. Okay, so the volume has spiked a couple of times and has been for a positive move. So that tells you that there's a lot of interest on these very positive, strong days. Even here, you can see that we spiked on a day that we tried to break higher. So that in and of itself gives you an idea of whether or not something's real. You can also um, take a look at basic, you know, this is a breakout. This is a breakout above, I mean, I guess you could call it 20. There's a, there's a little bit of a range here. But once we broke through here on this type of volume, that tells you there are scores of people willing to get involved. And that means something. And it did continue the trend. So at that point, it's a breakout. You should not be looking to short. You should be looking for um, value, places to buy, perhaps based upon this previous uh, resistance being support. So over here in Bitcoin Cash, let's put the RSI up. Overbought here, you can see that we rolled over. Oversold here, bottom of this move. Ended up recovering. Let's add the volume back into this chart so we have both going up at the same time. You can do that. Extreme volume, but oversold. As we started to get out of the oversold condition, it suggested that perhaps we could rally a bit. And we did. We went sideways for a very long time, but it was from this level. So it most certainly was a rally. You certainly would have made money there. Overbought. Extreme amount of volume started to drift. So you can see that not only does an extreme amount of volume on a breakout confirm the trade, it also can confirm that we're overbought and things are a little overdone. You know, you can see it there as well. So if we're overbought and there's a lot of volume, that asks the question, okay, so who's left to buy? 
So that is something to think about. This is an area that was resistant. It has shown support so far. Volume wasn't anything great, though. You do want to see a significant amount of volume going back into the market. So while this isn't necessarily a signal one way or the other, it does give you a little bit of a heads up as to maybe things aren't as strong as initially thought. So definitely it's a warning. It's a little bit of a, a thing to put in the back of your head. Definitely overbought in Binance coin on the daily. Uh, overbought here as well, but notice we didn't break down. We just went sideways. So let's put the volume up and see if there was any clue there as well. So we went overbought. Volume wasn't crazy. So we just kind of drifted sideways. We went overbought here on extreme volume and pulled back. Overbought, a lot of volume, probably too much to uh, maintain. Overbought, a lot of volume, did pull back. Nothing major, though. Kind of killed time here. Let's go ahead and draw a horizontal line, an area that should be resistive right here. We finally get the breakout. Nice volume. Not quite overbought yet. Do reach the overbought condition here, but notice how the volume isn't necessarily spiking either. So it's really not until you get up here that the volume spikes. Things get a little ahead of themselves. So now what you would probably do is wait till somewhere in this general vicinity to see if markets pull back and then maybe you get a spike in volume on a bounce. That would be a very healthy sign. Now, obviously, you can put other indicators on here as well. I would... Um, suggest that you don't want to put too many on because then you get what is known is, uh, as paralysis by analysis. Um, you know, where there's just so many conflicting signals that you never make a trade. So that's not going to do you any good. Uh, you need to experiment and figure out which indicators you prefer, or which ones tend to work the best for you. So notice here, the 50-day EMA for example, when we did this breakout on volume was underneath, but when we pulled back, we had a nice volume day there on a bounce of the 50 and we kind of went there. So there's a couple different ways you could have played that. We do not have divergence like I had talked about earlier. You know, the RSI is going higher just as price is going higher. So that's not necessarily a negative sign, but what this could be is an overbought sign. So simply step back, let price come back to you and pick it up when it gets cheaper. Volume accompanies most, um, uh, most trading systems. And therefore it's something that should be paid close attention to because if you get a breakout on very little volume. That might just be a very quiet and thin day. So you need to keep that in mind. We'll take a little bit more of a look, um, at volume as we go through the course and I'll continue to show it to you and show you how it confirms uh, various signals. You know, you don't like breakouts on lack of volume. You don't necessarily mind. Like if you're playing, uh, for example, the Bollinger bands, you know, where you were going back and forth. And if you get up here and the volumes light, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing for you to short this because there isn't a lot of interest. You know, volume is important, but in and of itself, like everything else, it's not the primary indicator. The primary indicator, of course, is always going to be price. Uh, so uh, that is the first thing you should always look at. In the next video, I'll run through and show you how to identify various overbought and oversold conditions.